Good morning, I'm the Reverend Stephen Page from St. Patrick's Anglican Church. Our daily CFMQ devotionals this month are inspired by events in the world of sports. They're available on CFMQ, on YouTube, and on the internet at pladegnog.blogspot.com. As the London Olympics wind down this week, let's take one more illustration from past Olympic Games. Let me tell you about Bobby Morrow. Bobby was quite the runner. His greatest successes came in 1956. That year he won the National College Championships in the 100 and 200 yard dash races. He was running for his alma mater, Abilene Christian University out of Abilene, Texas. And with his speed, he qualified for the 1956 Olympic Games. So off he went to Melbourne, Australia for the Olympics. Morrow's blazing speed served him well at the Olympics as he came home with three gold medals. He took first place in the 100-meter sprint, in the 200-meter sprint, and the team 4 by 100 meter relay race, a very successful Olympics. What made Morrow's success all the more remarkable was that before the starter's gun fired to start a race, he would be perfectly still in the starting blocks, not moving at all, tensed, and poised to spring into action, but motionless. Now that's the way it has to be now. The rules are now that when the starter calls set, the runners need to be motionless. Any movement is a false start. Once upon a time, a little movement was okay, provided the runner did not cross the start line before the gun. But Bobby Morrow thought that taking a, a rolling start, as it was called, was not good sportsmanship, so he would remain perfectly still until the starter's pistol fired. His stillness put him at a bit of a disadvantage, as others could get off to a faster start. But Morrow was so fast that he could still run past them and finish first, and he often did. So that's exactly what happened in his gold medal winning 100 meter sprint. A speedy Australian jumped out to a faster start. But Morrow had caught him by the midpoint and had passed him before the finish line and won the gold medal. Bobby Morrow practiced a peaceful stillness in more areas of his life than just before races. He was very skilled at relaxing, and he said that he averaged around 11 hours of sleep each night. His habit of peace and rest and relaxed stillness got him very calm and ready before the big races in his life. Be still, God says in Psalm 46. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. God calls us to put some stillness and peace, some quiet times, into our own lives. But not simply for the sake of getting more sleep or better relaxation, as important as those may be, those things are necessary to a healthy life, and God wants us to have such good things. But more than that, God wants us to be still, to stop all our busy work, all our worrying. Why? So that we can better listen to God, rest in God, talk to God. Be still and know more of me, is what God is saying. I think of Elijah, who sought God out on an isolated mountain. Elijah wanted to have a chat with God. And a strong wind came, and then the earth shook, and a fire raged. All of this happens in 1 Kings 19. But God was not in the wind. God was not in the quake or the flames. And then there came the gentle whisper of God, speaking to him. Sometimes we need to be still, to be quiet in our lives, to unplug from the internet or the TV, to take a break from the constant hockey practices or suppers and sales or all the busy things that fill up our lives. Those things, they crowd out time and space for God. Our God wants to be heard by you in your life, but God often refuses to try and shout over all the clutter in our lives. God's invitation and instruction is just stop. Put those things down. Be quiet. Be still. Let's spend some good time with God in peace and stillness. Let's listen for God's gentle whisper. For St. Patrick's Church, I'm the Reverend Stephen Page.